Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Thursday, July 8th edition of the Basement Academy. Thanks for taking a few moments out of your day. Hope this will be time well spent. Uh, July 8th, always a special day in our household as we celebrate the birth of our oldest child, Turner Meeks. And so Turner turns 29 today. Hard to believe. And so we rejoice uh, with him, and we invite you to rejoice with us and pray blessing upon his life. Uh, Psalm 128 is a psalm that um, is in spirit with this household code that we've been studying in Ephesians. Psalm 128 is one of the pilgrim psalms as the people of God are making their way to Jerusalem for worship. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem and may you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. A short and sweet family blessing, a reminder that those who give themselves to walk in the way of the Lord, to to give themselves to uh, God's word, a, a reflection, a meditation, a ordering of their lives according to God's word, that will shape their family life. You'll, they'll have fruitful labor, your work will be productive. Um, your marriage relationship, your wife will be like a fruitful vine, your children like olive shoots. And so this image of vitality and strength, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. And so this is the backdrop against which Paul is writing as he gives this household code, that God's intention, God's purpose for his people is that they would live properly ordered lives, that they would be lined up well under the authority of, of, of Christ. So submit yourselves to one another. Line up. Be, be in proper order. Um, care for one another. Honor one another. Uh, be in submission. This image of submission to one another being a properly ordered life. So um, there's a comment I didn't make yesterday. I, I thought about it in, in preparation for this morning. In the... In the uh, presentation of the the relationship between husbands and wives being like that of Christ in the church, there is another very compelling reason why I do not, I cannot support the legitimacy of same-sex unions. Now, I understand in a secular society, that is the law of the land. I recognize that. I respect that. But as an, I, I could not officiate such um, uh, a union because two men or two women cannot reflect Christ and the church. So that's, that's the analogy. It's this, it's this very significant uh, picture that's given. So just, just another comment, not trying to pick a fight, just trying to, to, to acknowledge that this is a New Testament expression. So not only do we have Old Testament expressions going back to, to, to Genesis, that marriage is intended to be a man and a woman. And so this is another one of those expressions that carries forward into the New Testament. So uh, sorry if that dis- is distracting uh, for what we're going to talk about today. So today we want to talk about the properly ordered uh, life between parents and children. So yesterday, Husbands and wives honoring one another in mutual submission or being properly lined up. The husbands laying down their lives uh, so that their wives uh, may be um, uh, uh, holy and blameless as Christ lays down his life for the church to strengthen, to to transform uh, the church. So husbands lay down their lives so that their wives may be transformed and may, may be made whole and, 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 and strong and, and, and fruitful. So we now talk about a properly ordered or aligned home with respect to parents and children. So let me read in Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then quoting the Old Testament, honor your father and mother, 
which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 4. Very simple. The call, um, the call really back to the, to the Ten Commandments, which again shows us that God's the, the, those commandments come forward in time. Not all of the old covenant um, uh, instructions or commandments come forward, but certainly the, this moral instruction does. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is in the context of, of who God is and what God has done. So children, obey your parents in the Lord. And then this parenthetic statement, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you uh, in the land. And so uh, Paul is citing Deuteronomy chapter 5, uh, verse 16, where Moses restates the Ten Commandments as they get through the wilderness onto the uh, edge of the promised land. Moses restates the, the, the covenantal uh, commandments, the Ten Commandments, so that this new generation would go into the new land, the promised land, and that they would flourish. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way as we know the story. So Paul here is calling back to the ancient command, as he does with husband and wife, uh, citing the Genesis, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one. So Paul now goes back into the covenantal um, uh, instructions with regard to parents and children. And so children, obey your parents and the Lord. But it's not all about uh, children just knuckling under uh, parents who are, again, demanding and bossy, similar, you know, why, so, so as he starts with the wives in submission that is properly ordered and aligned with the authority and responsibility of the husband to care for her, so children... Line up well with your parents. Honor, obey, respect, submit. That is, be in alignment with. So, so as you give yourselves to um, your parents' instructions, again, it's not that the parents are knuckling you under because fathers do not exasperate your children. So as the husband has a responsibility, responsibility to lay down his life for his wife, which makes it easier for her to line up under uh, the, the headship or responsibility of the husband. So children rightly obey their parents because the parents are rightly not exasperating them, okay? But instead, bringing them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That's an interesting phrase um, <clears throat> where it says bring them up, it's, it's, um, I, I, I wish it had a little better translation. Sometimes it's, it's, uh, nurture your children. Um, it has this idea of, uh, kind of patiently coming alongside, walking with them, taking them by the hand. So if you can picture kind of a, a, a parent and a child walking down the road, here's the path. Come with me and let's walk down the path together. That's the picture. Bring them up. It's this idea that the children who, who do not know how life works, who do not know the Lord, who, who do not know the commandments, who do not know how life works, who do not know wisdom and folly and error and truth, um, who do not understand the ways of forgiveness, that this And so it is the parental responsibility to show them the way. So that's the picture. Bring them up. Show them the way. Walk with the children. Don't, don't yell at the children from down the road, hey, stay on the path. It's come to where the children are. Instruct them in age-appropriate ways. Well, well what, not every parent knows how to do that. Particularly, uh, the instruction here is to fathers, okay? Again, the pater familias, the, the responsible one in the home. Fathers, you have a responsibility to instruct your children. Now, 
obviously we know mothers have uh, this, the lion's share of that responsibility. Often they're the one who is, is with the child more regularly after the child is born. And so there's a nurturing quality. If the husband is laying down his life for the wife to nurture her, so in turn then she nurtures the children. So this is part of the properly submitted, properly ordered home. But fathers have a responsibility. Don't yell at the children. Don't exasperate them. That that word itself um, sometimes is translated, do not provoke your children to wrath or to anger. Mm. Do not provoke your children to wrath or anger. There's a, there's a way in which we, when we speak to other humans, see, we forget sometimes that children are humans, right? When we speak to other humans, it's best not to yell at them. It, it, it's best not to bully them. It's best not to, um, to be sarcastic, to be rude. It, it's best if there is um, something that we want that other person to do, whether it's in a workplace or, or in some other kind of relationship, we ask or we, we ask kindly, we say, hey, I'm wondering if you could do me a favor. And then we patiently explain what it is we want to be done. And so why would we not do this with children? Well, well, well sometimes children are, they can be, in, I get exasperated by my children, uh, the father says. They won't do a thing I say, so I've got to raise my voice. And so... Um, I think Paul is giving wise instruction here that the, first of all, bring them up. That's come to where they are. You bring them up instead of, so go to where they are and then lead them into the path of maturity. And so a one-year-old is not able to communicate very well, right? I mean, there's communication, but not articulate. By two and three and four, all of a sudden, language is starting to take shape. By five and six and seven, okay, numbers and letters, and, and they're, they're learning to work in community. They've gone to school. They're learning how to cooperate and to share and to line up. And so the, 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 the community is helping the parents to raise the children. We know that. But Often the mistake that parents make, the, off, the, the mistake that this parent made, and God bless my son Turner, the firstborn is the one on whom we make all our mistakes, right? Or most of our uh, early mistakes because we parents are rookies. And so there is exasperation. We, uh, we often uh, expect or demand or um, otherwise... Um, <laughs> um, provoke our children in ways that they're just not able to fully grasp what we're trying to say. And so the, the beauty of, of having children is the growth that comes to the parent. Uh, I forget who it is that said the child becomes the, uh, the father to the man or the parent to the, to the man. That is, something in having children confronts us, again, if we're open to this as parents, and hope we are, in raising children, we are confronted with our own impatience, uh, with our own um, um, uh, lack of maturity, is that the right way to say it? Um, kind of overbearing, demanding uh, spirit sometimes. Um, again, I'm speaking as kind of out of my own experience of sometimes, uh, not sometimes, often barking at my children is the way I would talk about it, and, and getting frustrated that they didn't understand what I wanted. I wasn't bringing them up. I was further down the path, and then I was yelling at them, hey, hurry up, get going. Well, a child's legs are only so big, they can't go faster they can go, and so they can't read before they can learn their letters. They can't, uh, they can't run before they can walk, before they can crawl. And so it's this, the, the intention here is children have a responsibility to obey their parents. So, so we start there. But parents have a responsibility. 
grow up, parents. <laughs> I, part of what I hear here is, hey, don't exasperate your child. Well, what do you mean? Sometimes you're overbearing and demanding and impatient. You don't take the time because you're more occupied with your own pursuits, be it watching television, be it, um, you know, doing some chores around the house or, you know, running off to, uh, you know, staying at the office longer. And so the patience, the, the nurture, the care, the compassion. So the, the word, so bring, parents, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. This word training is the Greek word is paideia, where we get our word pediatrician from. Hmm. Paideia has to do with the, the young one who then has to be shaped and molded. And so parents, be a pediatrician for your children. Hopefully that'll help change the way. Now, I recognize some who are listening to the Basement Academy here may not have children. It may be grandchildren. So this is, I still, I think, still useful. Parents, you are a God-ordained, God-given pediatrician for your children. Well, when you say pediatrician, that kind of changes the image, doesn't it? Who is going to take your child and and let your child be cared for a doctor who's going to yell at your child, who's going to scold and nag the child? Now, there may be firmness at times. That's that's part of life. To be clear, to set boundaries, to to communicate expectations. But we want a pediatrician who's going to speak with a calm and gentle voice who's going to speak to the child in a manner, make eye contact. Sometimes the, the doctor will get down at eye level with the child to, to communicate, to, to kind of, to the, and that's how you bring them up. You go to where they are is the way to bring them up. And so that's the picture. The pediatrician understands child development. So parents, read some books, right? <laughs> Read some books about child development. Read some books about what to expect at a one-year-old, at a three-year-old, at a five-year-old, at a 10-year-old. Uh, parents, pay attention to what's going on in the world. Now, now I, I, I know parents kind of do this, and, and mothers probably more than fathers. But it's this notion, be calm, be gentle, be patient, but be clear that the, the goal of the pediatrician is to help this child mature and develop to be healthy. If there are activities or behaviors or other uh, things in a child's life that, that are in the way of, of good health and development, then the pediatrician is going to recommend something to the parent, to the child. And of course, w- the pediatrician cares for them, not just at the three-year-old or five-year-old level, but as the child grows and matures, and eventually they move on away from the pediatrician into like uh, an adult doctor. You know, the right way to say that. Parents, be the pediatrician. Talk to your child in ways that, that, that guide them well. And that will, if you think of, if you think of the role that way, <laughs> then exasperation is not is not going to you're not going to be exasperating the child now are children sinners yes do children resist good instruction yes do children resist going to bed yes so let me offer a a, a recommendation uh this uh, we had the the great blessing of a a couple in our first church, uh, when Turner was born, <clears throat> uh, he, we moved to Halstead, Kansas, uh, that place where I, I talked about having all that experience of so many funerals in such a short time. Um, that same church had a couple, uh, Joan and Colin Bailey. Uh, he himself was a physician, and they uh, watched, our, watched Turner for the night and sent us off to a John Rosemond uh, seminar down in Wichita. We were about 45 minutes outside Wichita. And John Rosemond uh, 
more of a child psychologist, not a pediatrician, but spoke about child development, the parent-child and, and husband-wife and family relationships. Uh, we, we got hooked, bought a couple books and bought a couple more and a couple more. And John Rosemond offers very old um, uh, wisdom. It, it's, it it's came across new because of what he calls the nouveau parenting, uh, the you know, the child-centered home. No, it is a parent-centered home. Husbands and wives are the foundation of the, the family. And so Paul starts with husband-wives relationship. That's the, that's the solid foundation. So a child needs to grow up into a home where the husband and wife are properly ordered in relationship with one another and with God. And when the child is in a home where that is taking place, the child will nurture and develop. And so Roseman speaks to that. So um, if you your children are up and, and grown, but you have grandchildren, you still might want to read Roseman and you might want to consider purchasing some Roseman books. Um, you can find him on the web and you can read about him not everybody likes Rosemond because he flies in the face of cultural understandings today. He says things like, Grandma was right. <laughs> you, you, you make your bed, you have to lie in it now. That is some of that old homespun wisdom that there are consequences to people's actions, right? And so the child needs to learn the consequences of their action. That it's perfectly fine to send the child to their room, okay? Okay. Um, he, he quotes, uh, and, and he, he's, a, he's framed, he is a Christian, and he frames his instruction biblically. Uh, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the, in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far from him. And so Rosemond believes in boundaries and being consistent, but he also believes in being calm. You don't have to yell at your child. If you've had enough, you say, okay, well, that's enough. I, I'm not going to listen to this anymore you can go to your room and I have some work to do. <laughs> and when the child protests, you say, okay, time to go to your room. And, and we found ourselves um, uh, encouraged by uh, the instruction and the advice of John Rosemond. Paul offers countercultural wisdom. This is countercultural then, it is countercultural now. Um. Do not coddle your children. You're there to instruct them. You are the parent. Um, and, so, and so there are elements of um, some of the parenting wisdom uh, today, contemporary parenting wisdom, that I do not personally subscribe to. Um, we did not subscribe to. I believe parenting is challenging. It is getting more challenging because of the advent I'm going to hold my cell phone up because of the advent uh, of these things. Uh, this has uh, brought something to our um, world that, that even Krista and I as, as parents didn't have to confront. So, um, so I, I stand with our, our, our younger parents um, who, who have young children and, 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 and uh, elementary and teenagers, great challenges that culture is bringing. And so you need countercultural wisdom. You need countercultural instruction. And Paul offers in these simple words such wisdom. Now, there, we need to find other resources that line up uh, with that. Um, another website, uh, another person. Uh, just go, I'm, I'm writing the word, if you're listening on the podcast, I'm writing the word screenagers. Uh, I can't even remember her last name. Delaney Ruskin, I think it is. Uh, she herself is a pediatrician. Screenagers. And it's talking about the, it, its wisdom for parents who have children as they're intersecting with screen time, be it computers or be it through uh, cell phones and the like. And so uh, very practical, thoughtful, research-based uh, clinically based uh, 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 thoughts. Um, so screenagers, uh, go Google that and you'll, uh, it's Delaney Ruskin, R-U-S-K-I-N, I believe. Um, and John Rosemond. These are countercultural resources that are necessary if we're going to stand firm 
against the tides of culture, if we're going to raise the next generation in the faith. And, and the challenges are great because the next generation are hearing from their peers and hearing from their world, um, not this kind of wisdom, right? I'm, I'm offering, you know, understanding that husbands and wives is a picture of how God intends it. So same-sex marriage. And of course, we know those are challenges, um, how to... Um, how to stand firm against the tides of culture in non-angry and violent ways, in calm and confident ways. Um, we're going to be talking next week out of Ephesians chapter 6 about the spiritual battle. So I'm going to loop back to some of these themes. You know, it, it's all so good and well when I can read it, you know, in my basement and be talking to you. But in the heat of battle is pretty tricky when a world around um, uh, the children is guiding them in other ways than the parents are guiding. And so that we're going to talk about that when you're instructing your children and then others come along, the peers of your children or the parents of peers of your children or uh, school teachers and the like and instruct them against what you have taught your children. And so uh, we have had that experience. I'm sure others uh, can relate to that. But we start with what God's intention is, a properly ordered home. Let me stop there uh, and I want to offer prayer uh, for our, our parents and grandparents who, who, who have uh, younger ones, uh, second generation younger ones growing up. So Father, hear our prayer. As we yearn for our lives, our homes, our marriages and relationships with children and grandchildren to be properly ordered under the, the wise guidance of your Holy Spirit. And so for those who have children or, or, or grandchildren who seem to be going astray uh, into uh, behavior and attitudes that seem harmful, Lord, we pray your mercy and kindness and uh, restore these children to the path, but help us to grow in patience and wisdom and humility, to know how to meet our children where they are and to patiently instruct and to show uh, the way to life. And so, Father, watch over our homes, watch over uh, our children, uh, those blessings that uh, we read of uh, in the scriptures. We yearn to be in the lives of our own homes, uh, families, and children. And so, Father, we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the God who cares deeply and passionately about your marriage and your home and your children and grandchildren, may he show you the way now and forevermore. Amen.